So I wanted to show you my rocket stove. Rocket stoves are a way to um, cook meals, boil water, do anything you need on a regular stove with a lot less fuel. Um, you just use sticks, just little sticks, and um, like this, and you can boil water real fast, you can cook beans, you can cook anything. I've been using one for about a month now, and I found it to work really well. In fact, I've been using it to cook all my um, noon meals um, pretty much. It's cheaper than the stove I have inside, so that runs on propane, so this works a lot better. I saw some plans on the internet for a rocket stove made out of cinder blocks. They just use four, but I've come up with an improved design that I wanted to show you. See, I just just cut this off right here with a masonry blade on a skill saw so it's all opened up like this. The rest of the cinder block is still intact. So as you can see, I set that up on a platform so it'd be a little bit higher up. Um, the next thing I'll show you is where I put the sticks in. For that, I just take a regular cinder block, set it up right here in front of my burn chamber that I modified. So this is where the sticks go, right here. After that, we need uh, another heat riser. Now I have been using this stove, like I said, very um, all the time for the last month or so. So this is, I think cinder blocks come in different kinds. This one's a really light one and it cracked on me. Maybe because of some extra weight I had on top. But it smokes a little bit when you start up through the cracks. But um, once the heat starts sucking through, then it doesn't smoke at all. So all I can say is it really works. I've just been using it a lot. Um, one of the principles with rocket stoves is that you want to burn up all the um, fuel in the gas, all the gases, before you start using the heat. If you cool off the gases before, you, um, before they get all burned up, you will get smoke. Um, you'll see with this rocket stove that it's almost smokeless when it's um, burning well at the right temperature. It burns up all the fuel, which means good, good um, use of the resources you have at hand, and less smoke. Nobody likes smoke in their eyes. So um, I need for um, I need and I'm going to put another brick on top. I found either two or three bricks on top of the burn chamber. This is the brick that I cut. Um, works right for me. So this is my other brick, so I just set it right on top there. And then after that, I got this off of a little, um, like a little propane stove like out of a um, camp trailer. And it works real well for putting the kettle on top. You need a space for the flames and gases to escape from underneath the kettle. So the thing what you always do with the rocket stove is you have the cool air coming in underneath the fire. Your sticks are gonna go here on top of this. This is just a good old can with both ends cut out and smashed to where it fits in my brick right. It works real well. Um, you just, your, your fuel always goes on top of this. Your air goes in underneath and that way the air comes from underneath the fire. It gets heated before it gets mixed with the fire and in that way your um, your f flames and everything will not get cooled off. They'll burn all the way. You'll get good clean heat. Your fire will work real well and it won't smoke. We're going to start up the stove now. I like to put a piece of paper or two in. Way back at the end of the, in the combustion chamber, that brick that I cut off. Then I found it starts well if you put in a handful of, um, Oh, pine needles or stuff like that. You'll find what works best for you and what you have around, but that works good for me. I'll put this uh, kettle rack on top. Then I put in the very important can that keeps the, the fuel above and the air coming below. Then I'm just going to grab some sticks. I usually start out with littler guys and then um, put bigger ones in later because I can just let it burn while I go do something else. You don't have to be constantly feeding it. 
I'm going to be cooking some beans. This is a Hawkins pressure cooker that I got from Amazon. It's different than your regular pressure cooker rather than jiggling all the time when it, it just uh, comes up every once in a while and lets the steam off, you'll hear it. Works real well. You can cook dry beans um, in about an hour, hour and a half, and they're real soft, and it doesn't boil over like a regular pressure cooker. So I got water, beans, and salt in there. Now it's time to turn it on. You'll see it smoke as it starts up because it's still got to get warmed up there. And sometimes I have smoke coming out through the cracks when I first turn it on, but that goes away pretty quick. It's, I can already see flames. I don't know if you can because of the light and the video, but there's already flames right up here. But pretty soon the flames will be just co coming out a lot more. You'll see it. it. Another thing, another important thing to keep um, in mind is you want the opening to your rocket stove to face toward the direction where your prevailing wind comes from. Our wind comes a lot of time from that way, so I have my stove facing this way so the wind can just blow right in and up. Um, the better, you'll notice your stove uh, picks up and roars more when the wind picks up. I can hear it doing it right now. You vary the temperature by how many sticks you push in. If you push a lot in, the flames will just come blasting out the top. And if you want a cooler temperature, like you're trying to cook gravy or something you don't want to burn on the bottom, then you can let the sticks burn more out this way and the coals um, are still on the back and it just provides a more gentle heat. Want to lift it up for a minute? Maybe it's too yeah, hot. No, no, this is probably the time. So as you can see, this rocket stove cooks food pretty well. There are a few other things though that you might want to take into consideration and that is that it does get your kettles black. So I haven't, it hasn't been a trouble to me, I just wash them off so they don't get my cupboards dirty. Um, but for me, it's not that big of a deal because free cooking outside, that's, that's worth it for me. But um, it is something to be aware of before you put your stove, your nice kettles on a rocket stove. Another thing is, most of the kettles I use out here have metal handles. I don't want the flames to come up and uh, hurt um, a plastic handle that might get damaged. This is my only um, pressure kettle, so I've gone ahead and used it, but I'm careful to always point the handle into the wind so that it will be cooler and the flames won't be rushing up on the handle because I don't want it to get damaged and start to disintegrate from the heat. But um, otherwise, that's about all there is to, to um, be concerned about. It just works really well, cooks your food fast, and it's free. Are pressure kettles dangerous? No, because um, this one right here, you know, you'll notice it has a little safety valve right there. If the, 
uh, pressure should get too high, like for some reason or another your food should clog this spout. This right here has a real thin sheet of metal that will just um, crack a little bit and let the, heat, let the steam out. So if it should ever get too high of a pressure, it'll just um, let the pressure out that way. Other uh, pressure kettles have a little rubber plug that'll just blow out if it gets too pressurized. So um, that it'll just be a spout of steam coming out. So a pressure kettle can never explode. Those pressure kettle bombs people make, I think they must weld those safety valves shut um, because a pressure kettle who's working properly will never be able to get enough pressure to explode. The safety valve will just let loose. So they're safe.